G'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the studio today and the giveaway for the MX Master 2S mouse from Logitech has finished as of uh, last night and super excited right now. I'm gonna announce the winner of that before we get into this video on the settings I use for the Canon EOS R. So let me just jump on over to the screen here and I'm gonna click draw winners. So there's 97 of you that entered, 97 uh, potential users that can win. So I'm about to click draw and it's drawing the winner. And the winner is Jennifer Bent. So I have all your details there. Uh, I'll send you out an email soon, Jennifer, just to uh, give me some details about where I can send the mouse. Thank you all so much for being part of this journey and entering this competition to win the mouse. And if you're not a winner, that's okay. When I hit 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 subscribers, I'll be doing more giveaways. And I hope that you can get something out of the content that I'll be producing between now and then as well. The channel has seen some incredible growth in the last two to three months, and I'm doing a lot of content now around the EOS R. So it's a new camera system that I think will really help uh, you all to up your game. If you have a look at the link below, uh, or might throw it up here, um, it's the link to a behind the scenes I did, all shot on the Canon EOS R, like a vlog style, but we just went through how we did this commercial shoot, and I think that really provides a lot of value. So ch make sure you check that out. All right, now let's Let's get straight into this video on the settings I use for the Canon EOS R. So hopefully you get a lot out of it. Let's take a look at the back of the screen. All right, so here we are looking at the back of the EOS R. First of all, let's talk about ergonomics and layout. Um, a few things I weren't, wasn't too keen on with the camera is when I'm shooting, holding the camera like this, to get to the record button, it feels a little bit awkward to come all the way back to the record button. I get it when you're shooting low that your thumb is available. So it's fine to have that button mapped to record, but I needed another option. So this AF on button, I decided to map this AF on button to my record button. So that then became a record button. And then the other thing is when I was shooting with my hand underneath the camera on the front lens, what happened is I had to then move across to the menu button to get up menu. So what I decided is I needed a menu button around here somewhere. So I actually mapped this bottom button to menu. So the bottom press down button becomes the menu button. Now on the 5D Mark IV, I always would come back from that screen because my hand may not have been on this side where the menu button was. I would always come back to the screen with the shutter button at the front of the camera. So basically half press the shutter and then I'm back to my view. So that's kind of the way that I had it set up on the 5D Mark IV, and it's certainly the way it works best for me. So anytime I'm in menu, I can work through the menus and I can use the buttons and I can set everything there with the Q set button. Then to get back to my script, to my view, I just click the shutter button half press. Now what was happening is I was getting the dummy presses because the shutter button is also mapped to the record button. So because I was always used to the record button over here on the 5D, I made the record button here. So that's now my record button. And the shutter button I basically made uh, as I turned it off because I never used that before as a record button. So I simply turned that off because I didn't need that as, as a record button. So now that becomes the way that I get back to my main screen. It's super quick in video and I like it. So the other thing is that I've set a control ring. So I've got the control ring. Now you probably can't see there. I'll just show you quickly here. Uh, the control ring on the camera, I've set that to ISO. So there is one issue that I'm having with this camera and it's um, basically, you could probably see if I just go up a little bit further here and on this screen, you can see that the ISO drops to auto. So it always seems to drop to auto. Even when I set it not to, it drops there. So I've got to be really careful that I set ISO, say to 100, and then I don't touch this control ring because otherwise it will drop to auto. But in terms, in terms of doing vlogging and stuff, it's awesome to just be able to crank the ISO uh, without actually having to touch any buttons. So I love that it's got that feature. Now something else that I'll show you here uh, on the back screen here is I have set 
Um, so you got the focus with the finger here, so you can move your focus with your rear finger, and I'll just reset here. So you can set your focus with your finger, which is really cool. So when you're shooting, you just you know use your finger, set the focus point like that. But also, I've changed this um, scroll wheel. I actually use it for on this side only for a digital punch in. So it's just a single digital punch in 10 times. So I can get my focus and I can do my micro focus if I want to. And then again, digital punch in. Now it's not set on this side. This side's set to nothing. So I'm not getting many false, um, you know, I'm not triggering it falsely many times, much. I've probably only done it once where I've triggered it falsely. So because you have to make this move across to get to the digital punch in. So that's what I've set this wheel to. Now, once I come into the menu system, it's set to scroll footage. So it's set to scroll through the menu system, scroll back, scroll forward, which I like. I do like that feature. Um, so again, a shutter, a shutter press to get back to this main screen. So that's kind of the layout I've got. This button I don't use as often. When I'm reviewing footage, I'll use it. But otherwise, when I'm shooting, I I generally am not using this menu button because I've set it down here. Now I have set one other button here, I think. Um, no, I think only the bottom button is set to that. So let's go into the settings and find out how you can set it. A little bit of a long explanation there, but hopefully you see the usability of the camera is really good for that sort of thing. So the record button, as I said, still works as record. And when you're in low mode with your th uh, thumb, I'll just show you like this. When you're in low mode with your thumb over the camera and you're holding onto the, the EOS R with your hand over, then it works great as a thumb like that. I like how that works. So I'd still use it like that, which is why I've kept it set to um, have the thumb over like that. All right, so basically the setup of the camera is we go across to the uh, last the orange icon there and all the way across to this setting here. This is something I had in the 5D4 where I changed the direction of my uh, these elements. So this on top here I've got set to my aperture in the lens because the lens is the front of the camera. So for me this finger scroll works well in the front of the camera and then I've got this here as my shutter because that's in the camera, so that works really well in the camera as a shutter. Uh, and then obviously the control ring, as I showed before, the ISO. So what I do with the control ring rotation is I actually keep that in the normal direction, but the dial direction TVAV, which is these two, I reverse the direction. Now the reason I do that is because I like to be able to go less light. So if I'm in the light meter here, you'll see the light meter at the bottom. I like to go be able to go down for less light and up for more light. And it's just something, well, I'm, I'm at the F4 there, F1.4 there, so I can't go any more light. And then again with shutter, down. So the dial direction in the direction of the, um, yeah, in the direction of the light meter, and then again up for more light. So that's kind of how I have that set. Now obviously your shutter is going to be locked out at 50 for these settings. Uh, my frame rate is in full HD uh, recording mode and 25 frames per second. And so that means you want to run a 180 degree shutter of 180. So that's where that setting works. Um, you know, really that really will be fixed, but then your f-stop can change um, and you know, so you can get less light if you need to, if the scene's too much. And then again, on the uh, ISO dial, let me just tilt back to show you the ISO dial. Uh, actually, I'll just show you in camera here as I go up the ISO, I'm going up the light meter scale. And then as I go down um, the same direction as this, uh, as this dial down that way, um, there's a top dial, I'm going down the is or the light meter scale so that's kind of just the way i've always set up a camera 
from back in the film days when I was shooting on an old Vivitar that my dad owned and it really works for me. All right, so that's the setup. So how do we get there? So let's have a good look at how we set it up like this. So basically coming into this setting here again and customize buttons. So this is the main menu that we're working in here to customize our buttons. So on the photography side, I do have a uh, the movie button set for the photography side and that will actually work in uh, C, what's called C3 mode. Now I'll talk about that in a little bit, but basically all that I've kept the same because I'm mainly using this for uh, video. So let's jump across to the video settings, which is what this video is about. So MFN is C, uh, the, um, the LCD panel illumination button, short press is info switching, and a long press is the LCD illumination. I don't do a long press, I'm only using a short press on that. Uh, so that allows me to cycle through info. The mode button is basically, um, yeah, to change the shooting mode settings, and that's the same. Now my AF on button, I've switched out to record. So straight up at the start, it was on, uh, pretty sure it was on AF on, AF off, uh, one of these settings anyway. And I straight away changed that to my record button because I really like the place it is. I don't hit it wrongly ever. I can rest my finger here and then just go, jump across and click that really easily to start and stop recording. So that was always good. Everything else I think I left pretty much the same except the menu button, the bottom button I changed to menu. So <clears throat> that was nothing set to that but I changed it to menu as I showed you in the beginning of the video. So just to quickly show you that again is to get into menu instead of having to come over here to press this button, I can just hit the down button and then I'm in menu. And then to get back out of menu, I just hit the shutter button, half press, uh, half press on the shutter. And that drops me back straight to the main screen like that. So that's kind of how I set that up. Again, down button for menu. So that was the main setup there. Um, and then the set was the Q, which was the same. That was always set at as uh, the Q button for set. So that was really the main thing. Now, another couple of things I did was info scrolling. I didn't want there to be four or five things to scroll through for my info button. So really I've just got my main screen without a histogram, my main screen with the histogram and the level, and then a clean screen to look at my final framing. So the way I set that is in the spanner settings, go through until you get to shooting info display and screen info settings. So here you've got options to turn on and off different screen info settings. So I've turned on two, which is all the info without the histogram and the level. Number three, which is the all the info and the histogram and the level. And number four, which is the clean screen. Number five is all this information, which I don't really use. So I don't need that to ever come up. And number one is just sort of a half the information, whereas I would rather scroll between all the information and no information. But that's a good thing to look at as well. Now, the only other thing with my setup is that the shutter button, which is, I'll need to find where it is, but it is one of these settings here button function here. So this is your shutter button function. Now in video mode, I'm in video mode now, it's a half press, which is meter plus servo AF. So it'll meter the light to show me where I'm at on the light meter. And then it will also run the servo on the AF with a half press and a full press. I was getting a lot of um, miss record, missing records a lot the first time I used the camera because it was set to uh, start stop movie record, but I just turned that function off because I basically only want to use it to get back from the menu to my main um, shooting screen and also to give me a look at what lot the lighting is doing and also a look at my focus where my main focus point is. So that is kind of my setup on this beast of a thing. And what I could say about it is that it really is intuitive and easy to use when you're shooting with your hand around the front of the camera, then you've got access to the menu. Um, the digital punch in is really good with this really intuitive and very, very quick 
and you know I really mispressed that because I've not set the other side um, everything all the dials that I need are really close my shutter and my uh, aperture are really close and also the ISO ring on the control ring adapter is really good as well so there you have it everyone that's how I set up the Canon EOS R for the most intuitive way that I found to use this camera it's got so much customization and I'm sure that based on what I've shown you you can probably get the best out of this camera as well for the way that you operate and the way that you think and setting up the menus that are going to be the best for you. I would just encourage you to just use it and utilize it and have a fiddle with the menus, have a play with the menus and work out what works best for you. And also in the next video, I want to show you how I use the custom settings C1, C2 and C3 because they're now available to set up predominantly for and in video mode as well, which is a little bit different to the 5D Mark IV. And also I want to show you the viewfinder and some other great things about the Canon EOS R. Been using it for three months now and honestly, I really love this camera. It really is awesome. Uh, I feel like it is a step forward from the 5D Mark IV. A few things it's missing. I like the motion JPEG codec, the big codec, but I can now shoot in IPB in 4K. So for client projects and things that where they demand 4K with file uploads, where I'm not sending a hard disk, I'm just going and shooting in 4K. Then I've got an IPB 4K image, which looks great and is still 150, I think it is megabytes per second, 120, sorry, megabytes per second. And it still looks good enough to upload to clients for client projects in 4K. So that is really good. That's a step forward from the 5D Mark IV. And anyway, I won't go into too much detail, but thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe if you got something out of this content because I'll be doing a little bit more on the EOS R and how it compares with the 5D. If you ask me right now in the comments, should you upgrade to the EOS R? I would say yes, definitely. Uh, it's worth the upgrade, I think, for the loop, the features that it brings. That was all for today, guys. Subscribe if you got something out of this content. Make sure you like this video. And if I don't upload between now and Christmas and New Year, well then, we'll see you next year. Have a great Christmas. Love to all your families and friends. And have an awesome and blessed New Year. Bye for now.